This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hello to y'all. I'm Reverend Roderick Burton, pastor of the New Northside Missionary Baptist Church. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, we have a word for you, uh, and we are praying that the Holy Spirit will reveal, teach, and allow it to plant itself in your hearts. Uh, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to lift up a word from your holy text. And Lord, we pray that you would breathe life into it. And Lord, that may it not come back void and may it do the work that you have sent it out to do. Lord, allow your servant to be of some use at this time in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. So today, friends, we're going to be taking a look at a text. We're going to take a look at 2 Corinthians chapter uh, verses 14 through 16. 2 Corinthians verses 14 through 16 reading from the New King James as such. Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph in Christ, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To one we are the aroma of death leading to death, and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? Again, we welcome you and we're so grateful that you're here joining us on today. This is a pretty incredible text. Paul the Apostle has written yet a second letter to the church in Corinth. The first letter had to deal with a lot of issues with their early church. And what's amazing is we forget, yes, there was healings, there was deliverances, demons were being cast out, but because churches are full of people, broken people, Paul had to address some issues, and he did it in that first letter, and he's doing it again in this second letter. And in the midst of his correcting, in the midst of his encouraging, we find this very encouraging text which talks about fragrance, asme in the Greek, uh, fragrance. And our question to you is, what is your aroma? What are you talking about? I'm not talking about whether you smell bad or whether you smell good, whether you got on Old Spice or whether you have on Unscented. No, we're talking about what is your spiritual aroma? Each and every one of us has a spiritual aroma. And so we're going to take a look at that, what is it, what can it be like, and what should it be like? First of all, Paul says in verse 14, Now thanks be to God, who always leads us in triumph. Think about that. Thanks be to God, those who submit to God, who believe in God, who will serve God. God will always lead you in triumph. And Paul during the time, Romans times, they would have these parades. When the Roman Empire would go out and defeat a foe, they would come back through and the legions would march in these triumphant parades and the crowds would go crazy. That's the same picture that he's talking about. I don't know about you, we're in St. Louis and we've had the football team, the Rams, win the Super Bowl and there was a great parade downtown and people were so excited. Then more recently, we had the Blues won the Stanley Cup, and they held the cup up, and the people were so excited, and they had their blue on. And then multiple times, we happen to be blessed to have a pretty good baseball team. The Cardinals have come back home with a triumphant parade, and the people are cheering. And this is what the same image. God always leads us in triumph. In what? In Christ. We are triumphantly marching with Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So Paul saying, Christ, the message of the gospel, the message of what Jesus did, his death, his burial, his resurrection, his coming again, that message smells good to God. It's a fragrance and the knowledge of that it goes out in every place that people are going and sharing the good news. 
And so Paul is saying, God always leads us triumphantly to spread the fragrance of Jesus. Verse 15, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ. Now let's talk about this fragrance. Back in the Old Testament, in the book of Numbers, the 15th chapter, in the third verse, Matter of fact, we'll just start at the beginning. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land, you are about to have it. In other words, when you come into the promise. And so, in the book of Numbers, God's getting the people ready to go into the promise. And he's, he's telling Moses to tell the people this. When you get ready to inhabit the land in which I'm giving to you, and you offer to the Lord from the herd or from the flock, a food offering, a burnt offering, or sacrifice. And so God meets people exactly where they are. In ancient times, people were trying to worship God any old type of way. They were burning up stuff. They were offering sacrifices. So God, through Moses, gives a particular way of worship for that time in human history. And God wanted the people to offer sacrifices. And that's what he's talking about. To fulfill a vow as a free will offering or at your appointed feast make to make it a pleasing aroma to the Lord. So what's this all about? Does God get off on barbecues? Does he like smelling cooked meat? And I'm sure our friends who are vegans probably don't want to hear that. No, that's not what it's about. What pleased God was that the people's practices as prescribed were worship. If they were obediently doing that, they were worshiping God and paying respect to God. And to God, that smell is the smell of love and respect and worship. And that pleases God. And so that's why when we get back to our text in 2 Corinthians, the second chapter in the 15th verse, it says right here, For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. God's please, because as we lift Christ up, as we live Christ, as we reflect Christ, as we teach Christ, we are the sweet aroma of obedience and worship and respect. And he says, this is what that aroma is like. To those being saved and, and among those who are perishing. So you're going to smell one way to some people, and you're going to smell another way to others, to the people who are being saved. What is about that person? I want to talk to them. I want to connect with them. They don't know anything about you. But it's the aroma of Christ to others who are in opposition to the gospel, in opposition to God. You are somebody they're going to pick on. They're going to mess with. That's just the fact. It's being laid out right here. Verse 16, to the one, we are the aroma of death, leading to death. And to the other, the aroma of life, leading to life. Who is sufficient for these things? Guess what? Friends, we're in a war, good versus evil. And guess what? One side has won. The victory will be complete when Jesus comes. But in the meantime, that smell of victory is all over those who are lifting up Christ. And for those who are against it, it smells like defeat. And they're angry and they're striking out. And folks are going to do some stuff to you. They're going to reach out to you. They're going to talk about you just because you smell like Jesus. And for those who are on the other side that smell like death, you are repulsive to them. But for those who want God in their life, who want to have faith, for those who are are walking a faith walk, before you hit the room, when they see you, you're going to smell a particular way, and they're going to want to be around you. They're going to get to know you. They're going to know, what are you about? And that's your opportunity to share. Let me tell you something about a man who saved my life. Let me tell you something about a man who turned me around. Let me tell you something about a man who is alive and who's coming again. 
this aroma, this eyes may, it's upon those who know him. And the question today for you is, what do you smell like? What do you smell like to God? What do you smell like to other people? You smell like death? Or do you smell like life? I want to share this other scripture with you in Ephesians, the, second, the fifth chapter, Ephesians 5. Verse 1 starts this way, Therefore be imitators of God as beloved children and walk in love as Christ has loved us and gave himself up as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. Remember, the sacrificial system that was set up in the Old Testament it served its purposes for then, but it was not enough. God sent Jesus to be the one-time sacrifice. In the ancient times, you had to keep offering sacrifices because you kept, kept messing up and it wasn't enough. But God sent Jesus to be the one-time sacrifice. And his sacrifice, which on one hand, God turned his back and, 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 the, and the, the, the earth got dark and the, and the ground quaked. He had to step away from Jesus so Jesus could take on all the sins of the world in his humanness because God is holy. But that, despite having to do that, it smelled good to God because, number one, the son, just like the father, so loved the world that he gave up his life. And that sacrifice pleased God. Pleased God. And he says for us to be imitators, guess what? For us to please God, are we to imitate Christ? We need to be that pleasing aroma to God. Too often we got people, maybe you, if you're a hunter, you know all about this. They have what's called scent blocking technology. Why? Because out in the wild, human beings smell a particular way to the rest of the animals. And so if you want to hunt, if that animal smells you, it's, it's not going to come anywhere near you. You're just going to be sitting out the woods hour and hour and hour with a rifle or a crossbow or stick or whatever. You're never going to see the animal. You're never going to see the rabbit. You're never going to see the, 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 the hog. You're never going to see the, the deer. You're never going to see any of those things. But they got on this scent blocking technology that you can put on, and all of a sudden, they don't smell you. And then they'll come around, and you can hunt them. That's in the animal world. But check this out. Some people, they allow their sins. They allow their conformity to the world all of a sudden, they stop smelling that sweet aroma of Christ. They begin to smell less and less, and they, people don't know what they smell like. They're in the middle of the road, and God doesn't want you to be hot or cold. He wants you to be on fire. He wants you to be resolute. So don't try to hide your scent. You want to keep that smell of pleasing a God. You want to keep that smell like Christ. You want to keep that going in your life. To attract others. Because guess what? If you don't smell like Jesus, you smell like death. And Jesus gave his life so that you may have life and life more abundantly. Why take on the scent of death and of the world when you've been gifted and called to life? The good news today, friends, the good news is this. Jesus has a mission for us to be in that parade of triumph over evil, to be part of that parade of triumph over all the, the, the injustices, all the brokenness of this world. When he comes again, he wants us to be marching. We, so just like that song says, when the saints go marching in, oh, how I want to be in that number. When the saints go marching in, guess what? And at the head of that procession is Jesus because he is the saintly of us all because of his blood that he sacrificed. That's what makes us saints. We, we become part of the, the parade by faith and that's, that parade, that triumphant parade is going to smell fabulous to God because it's going to smell just like Jesus. It's going to be fragrant. And the others are going to be marching that parade. We're just going to be lifting up this fragrance of, of, of love, of kindness, of acceptance. Don't you want to be a part of that? you got to be a part of that. To be a part of that, you've got to imitate Christ. Be like Christ. And God will always lead you in triumph. May you be encouraged today.
May God bless you. May he keep you. That's our prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for these words. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to be a part of your plan of our salvation. We thank you, Lord, for allowing us to imitate your son, imitate Jesus. Lord, may, us, may we consider what type of scent we're giving off. Dear Lord, we pray that it will be fragrant and pleasing to you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, friends. Today is the day that we like to celebrate the Lord's Supper. The Bible says this. Jesus took bread and he broke it. And he said, take and eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Let us eat it together. Likewise, after, su after supper, he took the cup. This cup represents the new covenant set out by the shedding of the blood of Jesus. As often as we drink it, we do remember him. Let's remember Jesus together. Drink ye all, the scripture said. May God bless you. May God keep you. May his face shine upon you and keep you in perfect peace. To God be the glory.